Let's now look at some special matrices and vectors that occur frequently and are particularly useful and often come with their own name. First, we have diagonal matrices. Here, in this case, the matrix D. Diagonal matrices are matrices that have non-zero values only at their diagonal. So we can also write them in this notation here, diag of vector D, where then the elements of the vector D are placed at the diagonal of the matrix D, but everywhere else we put zeros. Multiplying with diagonal matrices is particularly easy. If we have a diagonal matrix D and we multiply a vector with it, because we only have elements at the diagonal, we simply scale each element with each of these elements on the diagonal respectively. And we can write this um, also using the element-wise product, the Hadamard product between the vector D and X. So we take the first element of D multiplied with the second element of, with the first element of X. We take the second element of D multiplied with the second element of X and so forth. Inverting diagonal matrices is also very easy because of their diagonal shape. We don't need to do anything complicated. Of course, we could run a complicated numerical algorithm, but that would be wasteful. What we can do instead is we can simply invert each element of that diagonal matrix individually. And that will give us the diagonal, uh, the inverted diagonal matrix. A symmetric matrix is a matrix that is equal to its own transpose. So we can write A equals AT. This means that all the elements in its upper triangle have corresponding elements in its lower triangle. All the elements above the diagonal are corresponding to elements below the diagonal. Symmetric matrices arise, for instance, if entries are distances. We've seen distances before, measuring distances between, let's say, cities. If we have five cities, we can represent this as a five by five matrix, where each element is the distance between two cities. And of course, the distance from city A to B is the same as the distance from city B to, dis uh, to city A. And so we would have A element IJ equal A element JI, and hence, we would have a symmetric matrix in this case. A unit vector is a vector for which the L2 norm, the Euclidean norm, is equal to 1. And this is also a mathematical object that occurs frequently and that will use and name by its name unit vector. A vector x is said to be orthogonal to a vector y if the inner product between x and y equals zero. Unit vectors that are orthogonal to each other are called orthonormal. This is a composition. This word is a composition of the word orthogonal and normal. So we say orthonormal. And finally, an orthogonal matrix is a square matrix whose rows and columns are orthonormal. Sometimes this matrix is also called an orthonormal matrix. You can say either orthogonal matrix or orthonormal matrix. And so for that matrix, we have rows and columns that are orthonormal to each other, which means in other words that if we multiply A transpose to A, we get the identity matrix. Or if we multiply A with A transpose, we get also the identity matrix. And that of course means that the inverse of matrix A is equal to the transpose of matrix A. And it means that the inverse can be very cheaply computed as well. We just have to compute the transpose of a matrix. We have to mirror the elements at the diagonal. 